Hello and welcome to San Francisco uh, qualifying report. Before we get into the actual qualifying itself, I got some pre-race info for you. So today, due to the mud, it's been raining in San Francisco for the past few days and they've been struggling with it. They did cover the track up with tarps, but it didn't work very well. Uh, there's still a lot of mud there. They canceled free practice today, so they didn't get much time on the track. Uh, they even delayed qualifying an hour today as well due to the mud. Um, so yeah, it's a mudder. Pretty bad, but the track crew cleaned it up pretty quick. I mean, as good as it can get for a mud race and a day full of rain, I suppose. Uh, unfortunately, I wanted to add this in as well so you guys know about this. Unfortunately, guys had to wait in line to wash their bikes after the session as well because they're not allowed to spread mud or dirt on the roads as the pits are down the road. If you guys saw the map, the pits are a couple blocks down the road from the stadium, so they don't have much time uh, to recover in between sessions as well. Another struggle for the day. Anyway, let's get right into it. 250 qualifying session one. Uh, first place, Nate Thrasher. He yeah, looked smooth the entire session. Happened. There wasn't anything special about his ride. Just minimi play. minimizing Coming risks, minimizing the mistakes, the just riding consistent and the smoothest lines that around that the track. He just overall looked so good, so and it showed with his time. We'll Second overall was points leader RJ Hampshire. He got out front early. I believe he pulled the fastest lap time right out of the gate. Uh, but he ended up nearly cleaning out Max Voland on the second lap. He ended up keeping it on two wheels, though, luckily. Uh, he stayed consistent throughout the entire session. He did fall the second towards the end, but he did have a crash midway. Um, it was off a small jump. Wasn't that big. I'll throw it up on screen right now. I don't know if that affected him much. It didn't look that bad. He got up. He seems fine. Besides that, overall, it was a solid session for him. And that's what's tough with, with these conditions. Third place kind of came out of nowhere, Garrett Marchbanks. He wasn't seen much throughout it, and then halfway through, he put a third place time in. Uh, he didn't get much screen time throughout the qualifying or the race day live showing either, so I don't have much to say about him. I didn't see much. There wasn't much to watch for him. He just kind of popped up in third place, and they didn't say anything about him. I do have a small frame. I'll throw up on screen of him right now of him riding. That's about the only screen time he got, but congrats to Garrett on third place finish for this session. Now, I wanted to add this in. As the honorable mention, the actual third overall would be Max Sanford. He was in the B qualifying. I didn't do anything on the B qualifying because there wasn't much to talk about, but Max Sanford, he had a surprising uh, ride in that after implementing combined results from A and B. The privateer, Max Sanford, had a solid lap time of 106.236, which at the time I wasn't really paying attention. I was just watching it, and I figured, wow, he did pretty good for the session. Nothing crazy. Well, come to find out, it was good enough to move him up to third overall behind RJ Hampshire. So congrats to Max Sanford for third overall in the 250 class qualification. All right, here's the rest of the results for the 250 qualifying session. Like I said, Marshbanks got knocked down to fourth behind Sanford. Uh, Maddie Jorgensen, like I said, the uh, B qualifiers were actually obviously easier track, less damage to and destruction. So Jorgensen, I believe, was second in the B qualifying. He was moved up to fifth in the overall. Uh, sixth place, Mitch Oldenburg, Carson Mumford, Levi Kitchen behind him, Jordan Smith behind him, and Max Voland rounding out the top ten. Voland actually mentioned that he wanted to do better in the second round, but unfortunately, the second sessions got quali or canceled for qualifying, so that sucked to see. On to 450 qualifying, Aaron Plessinger, he came out in first place. He struggled at first, but he was about, I believe, 10th place at the beginning. Then he threw down a hot lap. He got first place a time of 109. That shows how much the track is falling apart, considering the 250 guys were getting 106s. Uh, he did stay on uh, two wheels the entire session. That was good for him. Mud is always good for AP. We all know that, so I'd keep an eye on him for racer, uh, races later tonight. Plessinger is always dangerous in the mud, so congrats to him. AP also mentioned after the session he was pretty confident in pulling off a win tonight. I figured you guys would want to see him talking about that, so let's hear a quick clip of him in a post-race or post-qualifying interview. 18 when you were on the 250s, it were great. You smoked the field, but now 450 results are sort of spotty. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm excited. You know, I just don't, I don't mind when it rains. Everybody else kind of like freezes up and doesn't really know what to do. So uh, I, I love it. So uh, it kind of levels the playing field a little bit. Um, I just got to get off to a good start and uh, see how the track shapes up. And I think you can uh, pull off a win here. In second place, we had Hunter Lawrence. He came out swinging in this session. He had the fastest lap early, then bounced back and forth between him and Chase Sexton. They kind of battled throughout the entire session, but by the end, he had a solid lap time of 109, 502. Overall, he just rode smooth. Minimal mistakes kind of bobbled here and there, but no crashes, nothing big. Hunter just looked great out there. Hopefully, he can carry that into later tonight. Obviously, he's a former GP guy, so you know he's good in the mud. On to third place, Chase Sexton. Like I mentioned, he came out battling with Hunter. Unfortunately, on a hot lap, he made a mistake, almost falling down, but still 
Third on the session, kept it on two wheels. He had a couple bobbles, nothing major. Battled most of the time, both with lap times, actual lap times, and on the track with Hunter. They kind of battled back and forth the entire session. That was pretty cool to watch. So congrats on Sexton. He's looking consistent on the KTM. Hopefully he can carry that into later tonight in the main event as well. All right, for the honorable mention, Jet Lawrence, he looked fantastic the entire time. Like in the footage they were showing him, he looked like he was riding on point, kind of over his head almost. Like he was trying really hard. But unfortunately, that wasn't enough to get him in top three. He finished fourth place. Uh, he just looked like he was trying too hard, and obviously it didn't work for him because he had less success of uh, his brother, the likes of his brother, and Plessinger and Sexton. They just looked more smooth, taking their time. Jack kind of did the bulldog style, and it didn't work for him. But either way, fourth place ain't bad. Let's see what Jack can do in the main event tonight. Figured I'd add this in as well. Malcolm Stewart, he had a pretty big get-off. He got really lucky. He kind of got stuck on the bike as he was going over the handlebars, which kept him off the ground. He kind of just slid down the landing of the jump, but it still could have been a bad crash. I'll throw that in here as well. But besides that, fifth place was Cooper Webb, sixth Ken Roxon, seventh Adam Cianciarulo, who I'd like to mention started off pretty hot but slowed down throughout the session, eighth Malcolm Stewart, ninth Eli Tomac, and 10th for Dylan Fernandez. Uh, Tomac had a pretty rough go out there. I'd like to add that in. Uh, other than that, not much to say. Well, like I said, qualifying was cut off early due to the weather. They canceled the second sessions in order to give the Dirtworks crew more time to clean it up for the race later tonight. Uh, here is Mike Pelletier, the AMA official, announcing that during the show. Here's his message. Max do a great job, and uh, his qualifying time may have to stand from the earlier round. We have Mike Pelletier, uh, Director of Racing for the American Motorcyclists Association. Mike, you got an announcement to make regarding the weather and what's about to happen for the rest of the day in qualifying. I do. Unfortunately, we're going to uh, not race the second sessions in qualifying. Uh, we've taken a look at the weather, the racetrack, worked with our dirt crew, and the decision is to uh, not do the second session in preparation for tonight's race. So can you talk about that? It's primarily preparation. But yeah, that's it, folks. It's a short one today. It's going to be a mutter. They are warning that rain showers may be moving towards San Francisco. So they're definitely going to have a muddy race tonight and possibly have to postpone the actual race maybe an hour or so as they did in East Rutherford, New Jersey last year. So we'll hear more about that as time goes on. Anyway, thank you for watching today's qualifying report. Hopefully we have mo mo uh, more info for round three, hopefully less rain. Anyway, Thank you guys for watching qualifying report of round two of the 2024 Monster Energy Supercross season, and I will see you in the next one.